Hey guys, it's Undead Chronic back again with another article reading. I read the Nice Guy article. Well, here's the article that that guy was responding from. And the title is, Dear Nice Guy, I wasn't ready for you before, but I am now. By Anonymous on April 16th, 2014. And you know, I haven't read this article yet, but it's pretty short. So let's just do a live reaction reading to it, shall we? And I'm just going to channel my inner ex nice guy because every dude kind of goes through that phase. Just depends how long it lasts. Some guys, most will learn by the end of high school that being a nice guy and doing what girls say they want won't get you pussy. You got to look at who they fuck, right? So let's begin. Dear nice guy, I don't know you yet, but I'm so ready to date you. Okay, right off the bat, ready to date you. She's ready to suck on your resources, like a vampire bat sucking on the bottom of some livestock in South America. You can't just get that bitch off of you. Seriously, I am. For a long time, I dated bad boys. Yes, I was that girl you blame for always coming in last. I guess I dated bad boys because, somehow, I like their unavailability, sexy sideways glances, and late night calls. I fed off the chase and mystery they provided me. I saw them as a challenge that I always happily accepted. Let me tell you, I've dated so many jerks throughout the years, a lot of times I ended up being disappointed with how it ended with them and wondered why I always had such blind optimism about these guys I clearly knew were jerks to begin with. But to be honest, I don't regret any of it now. You don't regret... Okay, you're going to try to get a nice guy to commit to you, and you walk up saying you don't regret taking miles and miles of bad boy dick. He knows you're settling, okay? And you say you like a challenge. Well, here's a challenge for you, Anonymous. Try getting commitment now that you're a use-up slut. You see, people people in general kind of project their lived experiences onto the world, right? So one, one black guy, right, gets f followed into a, you know, like a gas station and like watched by the clerks because those white people are oh so racist. And that black guy goes, you know what? Every white person out there is racist against me. This is systematic racism. And on the other side, let's say the white gas station owner, let's just make him Indian because there's a lot of Indian, right? He has been getting robbed by a bunch of black teenagers. So he makes the mistake of just thinking every black teenager has to be a robber because damn it, that's his lived experience. It's on the both sides. And with girls, right? They just assume that getting sex is easy, right? Bad boys come up to me all the time. I've dated so many jerks. So why are you upset that I dated all these bad boys? It can't be because, you know, you were alone in the wastes of the sexual marketplace while I was fucking around. No, everybody has the same life experience as I do, a female. It's just ridiculous. But let's continue. I learned a lot from each and every one of those bad boys. You know, the only thing I think she's learning is collecting genetic material in that used up cunt. That is so nasty to think about. I learned something from every unanswered text, from every I'm just not looking for a relationship talk, and from every lame excuse as to why he couldn't make it to my house party until after 1am. I guess I never let the jerks get to me. I realized it was never me, it was always them. I was born with an abundance of self-confidence. Uh-huh, I bet you were. Maybe that's why I was never too bothered by each guy who was a jerk to me. Maybe it was because I was smart enough to realize I never actually wanted to end up with a jerk. I, it was always you I wanted, nice guy. Your abundance of self-confidence is, you know, it's valid when you're young and pure, right? If you haven't had Miles Dickering on you and you're not fat and you're a female and you're between the ages of 18 and, you know, 24... Woo! You are worth a lot on the sexual marketplace. But now, after tons and tons of bad boys, you know, it's like one of those gangbangs. 
it just gets ridiculous after some point. You're like, look, man, you're the hundredth dude to bust in this chick. At what point do you just get one of those little like gel toys? You know, they sell little kids. It's like kind of like a tube. And it has like a bunch of not like like gel with sparkles and shit in it that you can like put your finger through like woo woo just lube one of those up and jack off with it because having sex with this chick is not going to satisfy you in any sense of the word right maybe it was because I was smart enough to realize I never wanted to end up with a jerk well you know maybe you should have found the nice guys because you spent all your capital right. Time is a precious resource. It is the most precious resource that we have been gifted with on this planet, right? You never get more time. So the fact that you gave, as a female, your most valuable time, the literally most valuable part of your sexual life, you gave to bad boys. And now you want to go to a guy, a nice guy, during the most valuable part of his life. Bitch, no. If, if nice guy doesn't deserve you when you're at your best, you don't deserve him when you're at your worst. Marilyn Monroe can suck my cock after that. <sighs> With all that being said, I'm ready to date a nice guy. I've learned all the lessons I need to learn from bad boys. Well, I hope you remembered how to swallow because if you say you're just not into it or you respect yourself now... Bitch, I'm taking you out the door. You're leaving. And even if you do swallow, you're still going to leave because I'm not going to commit. Because never commit to a slut, okay? Thoughts, thoughts are fleeting things, right? You shag the thought, you send it up. Someone else's problem, thought or not. I now have the ability to distinguish between when to give up on a relationship and when to fight, when to fight harder. I know all the excuses and lies and can see when it's right to say a big fuck you or an okay, I'll let you make it up to me. Wow. It's like she's never done anything wrong. She hasn't learned anything about herself. She just became, you know, more disagreeable, more of a bitch. Fuck you or I'll let you make it up to me. <laughs> tingle, tingle as I run off. You spend money on me, beta. It's just ridiculous. This is disgusting. Can I make it through this? Guys, I need to eat soon. I'm about to puke. I haven't eaten all day. I know what it's like to get all dressed up for a night out only to sit in your room watching Netflix, crying and staring at your phone because the person you had plans with never showed. You know, guys, I got stood up on a date once back in my purple pill days. I'll say I was still taking girls on dates. And you know what I did? This bitch, quick story. This bitch stood me up. It was fall. I was going to take it to the pumpkin patch. We are going to carve some pumpkins out. I'm going to take her home and make a pie. <laughs> this bitch stood me up uh, because I was, quote, trying too hard, right? And that's that's how you, you know, you just get straight up told. There's a couple times in your life you're like, oh, I know what I need to do to fuck the girl. So, you know, I did the most mature thing and, you know, I had sex with her best friend and, don't, don't you guys go, oh, an chronic such a player. She was pretty gross, but, but, after fucking her best friend, your boy got with her little sister, and let's just say his new phone had a camera on it, and somebody got a lot of videos. So there's always ways to get back, and why the fuck did I say that? I don't even know. Fuck these bitches. Oh, that's why. These bitches. Thoughts. So getting stood up, oh, you got stood up for a date and you watched Netflix. You know what? As a girl, you can just go to the bar, right? If you're all dressed up and you can find a guy, not hard. And that a got too drunk, sorry text is not a sufficient excuse or apology. I know all these things. My mom always said that the people that the problem with people who end up unhappy is that they don't know how to walk away from something that has already served its purpose. Wow. So you see guys as tools that serve a purpose. They're literally, they, they see men, they're objectifying men, right? Men objectify women sexually. Yeah, because men want to have sex with them. This woman objectifies men who have served her purpose. Now, in this case for bad boys, it's to get that pussy wet. For you, nice guy, it's to 
lighten that wallet on her. So, you know, I hope you never find a guy to fill that purpose because that is a disgusting way to look at relationship. Well, I can see now that bad boys have served all the purpose they possibly could in my life and that it's time for me to learn a new lesson. I want to learn from you, nice guy. Oh, this is perfect. Well, you know what all those bad boys, all the purposes they served in your life? They served the purpose of smashing you and dashing on you during your most valuable years as a woman. Your young, your youngest, most fertile, beautiful years were squandered on guys that didn't commit. And now you want to learn a new lesson from a nice guy? Um, Undead Chronic's not a nice guy. I'm an asshole, but I'll still teach you this lesson. And here's the lesson, right? The older a woman gets, the harder it is for her to get commitment, right? And here's a lesson. You can either choose. This is a very simple choice for every woman out there, you know, starting out in the sexual marketplace. In terms of guys, you can either choose quantity or you can choose quality. And this chick already chose quantity. She's been falling on every single dick probably since 92 and nobody wants that. The only person that wants to touch this bitch is a CDC investigative team with a probe to make sure that super gonorrhea hasn't fucking gone airborne. Okay, we're almost done, boys. It's time for me to learn what it's like to have someone to fall back on when I feel weak. I thought you were a strong, independent woman. You just, you, do you want, who wants to be here for this chick? She's not attractive anymore. She's old. She's used up. She's probably got a couple of hitchhikers in microbe form in her vagina, STDs. And she wants to fall back on you when she's weak, most likely financially, because someone with a career that was driven like that would probably have, you know, the outlook of a more masculine person and they don't need a relationship, but she obviously wants one. So I'm going to doubt that her career is really lighting off. It's time for me to understand what it's like to open up to someone without the fear that I'll be emotionally shamed or that it will scare them away. <laughs> you are, yeah, well, you know what? You know what every man feels between the ages of 13 and, you know, 30. Just getting emotionally shamed or scaring away chicks if you open up to them. So you're living life like a dude now, a low value dude, because you're a low value woman, because again, you've jumped on every dick in your local area. It's time for me to understand why people write love songs or tear up, tear up at the end of the notebook. I want to know what it's like to be desired for more than my body, for someone to look at me with passionate eyes, slowly but surely falling in love with my mind, body, and soul. Well, you know what? You're not going to be just desired for your body because your body is not the same. And I mean, yeah, that's that's like the most valuable thing. A, a woman's body in the sex game is a man's wallet. Would you want to find a nice guy who is poor as hell? How about you find a nice guy at McDonald's? Huh? Come on. Why not? I'm sure that he'll love you for your mind, body, and soul. I think we need to think a bit more before we just jump on Chad. I want to know what it's like to have someone who will always show up who will always make time for me and who will always respect me. I want to know what it's like to be able to count on someone and know that even though love is never safe, I will be safely hurt by them. Mostly, I know I can learn all these things from you, nice guy. What nice guys are you talking about? Nice guys turn into assholes, right? I think we need to make a flow chart, you know? Every guy, most guys start in the nice guy category, and they can go into incels, they can go into red pill, they go to purple pill, they go to blue pill, but, you know, blue pills are just extended nice guys. But the dudes you're looking for, maybe the ones that you remember, they either, you know, got locked up by some other chick who's going to, you know, lock down those resources, some chick who had kind of foresight, who thought about resources instead of Chad Dick, and jumped on that, or he turned into an asshole. Or he turned into Undead Chronic, and Undead Chronic's gonna say, I've finally been looking for someone. You you have so much experience. Why don't you come to my place after drinks? Now, 
I'm on vacation. I'm in a hotel. This bitch is 33. But she still kind of has a nice ass because she's trying to work out to get a nice guy. I'll be nice to you for the night. But come morning, you boys know the drill. I'm ghosting in a cloud of kush. She's going to be like, <coughs> flowing away the kush. Like, are you smoking in your hotel room? What is that? It's some stanky shit. And the smoke clears. I'm gone. I ghosted. Nowhere to be seen. Because why would I respect these chicks who only want to come for me for my money? If I'm going to go with a chick that only wants to be with me for my money, she's going to be at least half this bitch's age. And she's not going to be run through by a legion of chat. I don't want anyone thinking I hate bad boys. I don't hate them. I'm just done with them. Yeah, they're done with you probably. You think she'd be having this problem if bad boys were still trying to fuck her? That's an honest question. I honestly don't think so. I think if bad boys were still trying to slam this mill for whatever she is, she wouldn't be writing this article. I have to thank bad boys for a lot, actually. Yeah, a lot of genetic material you have accumulated through the years. Bad boys have taught me how to depend on myself, how to pick up my broken pieces. They've allowed me to secure the perfect breakup remedy. Booze, friends, rebounds, cry, work out, acceptance, find new bad boy, repeat. That is fucking horrible. <laughs> I mean, okay guys, my breakup remedy, remove all of those except work out. You channel that rage to lifting. Yeah, it's always good to have friends. Booze? Never go to a bottle to ignore your feelings. That is a fucking horrible idea. Rebounds? Again, don't go to something bad to cover up your feelings. Guy or girl, if you're just having crazy amounts of sex with randoms to get over your ex, that is a very dangerous behavior. It lowers your sexual market value. Crying? Okay, that, that could be kind of useful. There's a biological function there. Acceptance. How long does it take you to accept that the bad boy left and find a new bad boy? Pfft, no hope. No hope at all. And we're already almost done with this article. I understand myself so much better because of these bad boys. I do too, to be honest. I know that you're a slut. And I know a lot of things about sluts. So I understand you much better than the average person I don't know. I know what I'm like at my worst, but I'm ready to know what I'm like at my best. You don't know what you're like at your best? You really, you're going to write a, write a pro and con list of, you know, dating. Why would I date you? Pros. Has vagina. Cons. Has STDs. Has a ruined pair bond ability. That vagina is blown up. Doesn't know her best. Is used to bad boys. Retreats into the bottle. Cries and sleeps around. Wow. That is quite the list we've conjured up just off the top of my head. I promise you this, nice guy. I don't know you yet, but I will be a nice girl to you in return. I will show you what you're like at your best. I will treat you with the respect you deserve and will always answer your call when you need me. I will show you that all these what all these bitchy girls couldn't. So I guess all there is left to say is, I'm ready whenever you are. <laughs> The entitlement of this post-wall slut. She thinks dudes are just waiting in line. She thinks it's like the DMV of pussy. Bunch of dudes just waiting outside, looking at this bitch, getting examined by a doctor. You know, Undead Chronic's going to be a gynecologist in this universe. And he's going to use multiple layers of gloves to investigate the absolute massive amounts of culture and used up cum in this bitch's pussy. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to show all the dudes at the, the PMV, the pussy office. I'm like, do you, do you guys really, you guys still waiting in line, huh? Is there like still a three hour wait for pussy? No one's in those chairs. No one's waiting. You are at the end. The market's about to close. The sexual marketplace for you is about to close. And you know what, nice girl, whatever you are, you better give some amazing head. And you better make a lot of money. Because that's the only way I'm thinking you're going to get any kind of sniff of commitment. But, you know, if it's up to Undead Chronic, I would just say invest in some cat food. It's been Undead Chronic, guys. Take it easy. Hey, guys. It's Undead Chronic here. And we are having an absolute blast here at the Undead Chronic Summer Pool Party. The only problem is 
I'm running out of propane, and there is an ample supply of feminist pork to roast. So please, consider donating to my PayPal. That's paypal.me slash undeadchronic. Or become a patron. There's a lot of ways you can support the roast. I hope you find it in your cold, dead, red pill heart to open up that wallet and lighten your load on me. It's been Undead Chronic, guys. Take care.